I just don't know where they're going to go. I'm, I'm wondering, Jason, if with the new owner, I mean, we've just seen there the, the, the last eight games and the, the form table. It's, it's not good enough if you're Chelsea I'm coach. Winning. No matter if you've only been there a short time, they, they, that club demands results. But I'm wondering with the new owners, whether they've said to Potter, you know what, Graham, we need to change. We can't keep doing massive deals to get the big players in. We need to get some of our own through as well, mm. some younger players. And you're going to get time. Because when you look at people like Chuck Maweka, Conor Gallagher, Romari Hutchison, Lewis Hall, these young kids who are getting an opportunity mm. right now, I know they've got a lot of injuries and whether they would get that opportunity, I don't know. But if he's been told, you can move this team on and we'll happily have a bad season or accept a bad season, not happily have one, we'll accept it as long as we can see that this club moving forward and these players are going to be good enough to come through. But it is a gamble to do that. Mm. It is and they're going away from the, the philosophy, aren't Correct. they? Which Absolutely. I don't, maybe the new owner wants that. Maybe I don't it's know, not Todd Bowley... I don't know. He seems, he seems very similar to Abramovich almost so far. He's really going for some big money signings. He's willing to put his hand in his pocket. He, he's well, spending. Uh, see that f that form he's on there, Nicky? Oh, yeah. That form he's on now. If Abramovich had been in charge, he'd be gone. Oh, yeah, be gone. He'd be gone. There's right. a difference. And that, that's why I don't know whether he's been, he's been assured that he's going to be there. So let's nurture it and let's try and bring these young kids through. And, and you know, we, we'll wait and see, but I don't know what Chelsea are right now. I agree yeah. with Jason. I don't know what they are. I don't know whether they're close to being a, a, a good team again or whether they're close to being a bang average team. Mm. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you wonder what coaches and, you know, and Guardiola must have been as disappointed as we were at half-time when we were in there, Nicky. And you have to give him credit because he made the two changes. He's got both full-backs off um, and said, right, you know, Cancelo, walk up, off you go, change them, change it a little bit, the way they were playing. And then brings another two on at a very good time, two wide players stretching them. So that's both wide areas. He's really fr he freshened up in that second half. And they made so much difference. Like they were quicker through the lines, they were quicker when they were moving it laterally as well. But I just thought they were an excellent second half where they were really poor first. Yeah, interesting. Good for Jack Grealish though. He needs these and he's given Pep Guardiola something yeah. to think about. Mm. He's needed something, Nicky, for, for quite some time. I'm a big Jack Grealish fan. I really am. Um, I think he's a terrific footballer. I don't think he's shown City anywhere in the like. He, and, and, and little bursts, little spasms. He has. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping that the, what happened in the second half at Leeds recently, when he had such a big contribution to that game, uh, created a couple of goals for yeah. Haaland, then he's created another one tonight. I'm just hoping for Jack's sake that but um, this might be the turning point for him in his Manchester City career. It just takes something like that sometimes. You know, everyone thinks because Grealish is a good player and he's been bought for 90 million and he's going into City, he's going to be the same or better. Sometimes it doesn't work out like that. Mm. Big signings have gone wrong before, so I'm hoping that that's the turning point for him and we'll see more and more of that kind of stuff from Grealish.